guess we'll get started. <laughs> I'll close the other half in a minute. Okay, so yeah, I'll go ahead and, uh, and introduce our speaker. So today we have So, so Young Chang, and he's from the, the uh, Argonne National Laboratory Material Science Division. I'd like to tell you a, a bit about his, uh, his background. So he uh, received his PhD from the uh, Seoul National University in South Korea. Uh, his advisor was Professor uh, T.W. No, and uh, while he was there, he worked on his uh, thesis project, which was on uh, resistive switching related to memory devices for information technology. Uh, 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 since 2011, he's been at Argonne National Laboratory. He's worked um, in the synchrotron radiation studies group with uh, Dr. Jeffrey Eastman and uh, Dylan Fong. And he's also worked in the uh, electrochemistry laboratory, most recently with uh, uh, Ninad Markovic. And uh, his studies are related to uh, electrocatalytic properties of uh, complex oxide materials for energy uh, storage applications. And uh, today he's going to tell us about the uh, functional oxide thin films for energy and information storage systems uh, related to, to, uh, to, to both kinds of uh, work he did for his thesis and his postdoctoral studies. Um, so, uh, and so before I turn it over to you, Dr. Chang, here's our gift we uh, traditionally give to every speaker. Can I also? Yes, please. Uh, decades. 
from 1980s to 19, uh, 2010. So the most important thing is starting point is work to film and artificial structure like super ellipse and that uh, layer structure. So the interest was uh, high DC superconductivity and 2D electronic gas like uh, arm arsenal. Uh, so they really controlled the atom like this at atomic level uh, precision. So they can create new phenomena like giant uh, conducting channel and register switching. However, the question was depending on the motion of the ion or array of the ion, they change the various physical property in this system. So we don't know yet how to understand and control the oxygen defect in complex oxide system. So that is the biggest obstacle in our field. So here's my story as a physicist. As uh, Randy introduced me, uh, I've studied the complex oxide, especially strong correlation uh, system and resist switching phenomena as a memory device. And from this knowledge, I realized that, as I mentioned before, the oxygen vacancy or ion motion in complex oxide is a key factor to tune your physical and chemical property. So I want to learn how to manipulate the ion or oxygen vacancy effectively. To do that, at Argon, I run the electrochemistry that is, which is, can give us various tools to moderate the uh, electronic transfer and chemical bond and electric field effect. So today I will discuss about the information storage system, especially at the interface between solid oxide and solid oxide. At and also, I want to introduce the energy system. What is our energy system is, and how to control, and how to understand our system. Especially at the interface between our complex oxide and liquid environment. So my ultimate goal in my career is to understand, understand the emergent phenomena of complex oxide, especially uh, in at the interface between liquid and solid or solid and solid interface to generate the uh, emergent phenomena. So I will talk about this in situ X-ray study for energy conversion system at Argon. So before going on. I will introduce an uh, interesting cartoon from our group. So, so uh, here is electric car and there is solar panel and you see there is a jar, giant computer system. So this is a green energy for uh, our life. Then if you think about the green energy, what is science to achieve this green energy? Many researchers believe that electrochemistry. However, I think the basic and fundamental science of this green energy is the microparaday and Owen Schrodinger is related to physics. If you see very carefully, there is a Schrodinger equation and there is some uh, relationship between chemical energy and electro electrical energy. 
So we have to understand physics. Then I will talk about this a little bit more detail in later. Then, so what is energy system? And what is our approach in physics department? So my simple question is, we need a material system, new material system for energy. So it is not my own idea. The basic energy science, the BES program, uh, reported uh, this uh, article. They mentioned new energy material is the key factor to solve the energy application like catalysis, energy conversion, even battery. So there is some common sense. After three years later, actually they built some new program, so called material genome initiative. So people agree that we need new material, then how to do that? That is all about this project. So we have to synthesize our material efficiently and effectively. So here is our effort to find the new material effectively. So DOE, the Department, Department of Energy, initiate two grand challenge like Apollo project. One is JCG, Joint Center for Energy Storage Research, funded by uh, DOE, and this, uh, the budget it's around 100 million dollars. It's a huge project. From DOE recent national lab to university and even with the industry. With a lot of resources and funding, they want to find the new material for energy application, especially JCG want to attack to the battery. And JCAP uh, wants to look for some energy conversion system, for example, uh, photosynthesis. So I also participate in the JCG, uh, the electrochemistry discovery lab. Um, my job is to build up in situ uh, clustering, combining with uh, synthesis, spurring, oxide MBE, and PLD at the same time, and with the uh, X-ray photo emission. So it is huge effort. So our common sense is that we need advanced tool for synthesize and characterize. So we need that. So here is our one of effort at Argon. We built high quality film synthesis tools, so for oxide molecular beam at taxi. The, the unique things of the oxide MBE, our oxide MBE is the combination between X-ray and growth part at the beam line. So Actually, we can monitor the, our growth during, during the growth. So finally, we got ability to control the oxide film at the atomic level precision. So let's go back to our energy part. I want to introduce one particular application, so for oxygen evolution reaction. Usually DOE or science, scientists uh, like the acronym. <laughs> so we use a lot of uh, acronym, the OER. It's a very simple. In your 
I live in free school. You did a water spring, or if you think about, uh, remember Kelpy, then you can remember some origin with verb. So this is the same thing. The chemical reaction is like this. The 4OH minus become oxygen and electron. So this is a very limiting factor for oxygen production in water, water catalysis from chemical electrical and energy to chemical energy. So if you look at this graph, the current density and versus the voltage, here is the black line here. So general setup is like this. So you need you need the reference electrode and counter electrode and your working electrode. You can focus on two things platinum and your catalysis. If you use a platinum as a catalysis, then activity follows this black line. However, if you choose a right electrocatalysis, then you can lower the energy barrier like this from black line to red line, then you can get the red curve instead of black curve. What does it mean? At the given activity, at the same current density, you can you require lower potential, which means that you need lower energy. So you save the energy. That is lower of electrocatalysis. So if you find the proper and good electrocatalysis, then you can save energy in our life. That is our motivation, and this is our research goal. So we have to find the good electrocatalysis for real application. I will introduce later. So the question is, which material you want to use? So I introduce the transition metal oxide because I have some expertise about the transition metal oxide. So at 2011, MIT group published in very nice paper, especially for the OER activity. So if you look at the graph, the, this is activity, what I mentioned before, and this is a ground state of your material. So there is a curve like this. We call, usually this is a mountain and volcano curve. So if you look at the carefully, there is a lot of material. They plot that. Waves. So this plot indicates that if you control your quantum state, like ground state, then you can tune your activity, like following this line. So it is a very <coughs> fascinating and it is a new result. So we can understand how the chemical reaction by using the, our physics knowledge. So then what is the best material before that? I, I want to introduce the lutetium dioxide. This is the best material for the OER. However, it is very easily degraded during the OER process because it is a very harsh condition. You apply the electric field into your solution, so some particle can be dissolved during the process. However, the problem was here, conventional approach using powder like this nanopowder, so for a high surface area sample, we cannot monitor when the dissolution starts or 
what is the critical potential, what is the kinetics. So my question is, go back to MIT result. The ground state at the surface is the same with the bulk phase, it's the normal phase. So this is my simple research question for this particular application. So we need we need understanding between react, reactivity and stability at the same time because we have to know the structure at the surface to understand real quantum state of the material. So how to do that? We need a high quality film with the atomic level. This is our research goal. So we devote Last, most of time to build the setup for obtaining high quality film with atomic level. So how to do that? We, as I mentioned before, we built oxide MBE at the synchrotron. First, we prepared the well-defined surface as a substrate. We can we know this is a B side. Uh, terminated uh, perovskite. So, using the shell, we can deposit the A side and second layer A side. By using in-situ X-ray scattering, we exactly know <coughs> this is uh, one unit cell and this is two unit cell of the sample. After two unit cell, we change the shutter. We can grow the B side. Eventually, we, we can get the layer structure. We can control the, uh, the sequence and the structure at the same time. It is a very powerful, powerful tool. So, then, What are, what's our understanding from the oxide, in situ oxide MBE? We learn a lot of uh, synthesis science. Even though we deposit the two SRO and one titanium, by using in situ X ray uh, studies, it doesn't happen that way. Because if you see this X-ray pattern, the second SRO pattern is exactly the same with the last uh, deposition. And what happened? If you deposit the titanium, then the second strontium layer was swapped during the growth, part, growth process. Why? By using DFT calculation with the collaboration collaborator, this ground, this energy configuration is lower than this energy configuration. So layer swapping or laser rearrangement is unnatural. Then how to solve this problem for the layer structure? We need an additional layer. If you want to deposit the two SRO, then we have to deposit one more. So we have to deposit three SRO. Then we can solve the problem. So this is our recipe, and this is our example. We deposit the Ludus Papa series, the lantern nuclei, which I mentioned before, the layers, layer structure. We can increase the uh, Quantum uh, runtime layer two or three or infinite. However, this high end compound doesn't exist so far. But by using our recipe, we can create the new compound. This is our power. We can understand the synthesis science then we can build up our own recipe for complex oxide, then 
we can we can create a new material. So this is our approach and this is how we work. So go back to electrocatalytic activity. So I mentioned the lucidium dioxide is the best material. So our idea was the how about lucidium dioxide is easily degraded. So how about using the passivation layer? So we choose strontium layer as a passivate layer for maintaining activity and to enhance, enhancing, for enhancing the stability. So we design two different orientation, 001 and 111 structure, and we create. So by using X-ray uh, diffraction and atomic uh, force microscopy, we verify our sample is atomically flat. This is uh, one atomic, uh, this is one layer uh, high. So we measure the electrocatalytic activity by using our setup. Then we realize, even though we use the same material, strontium and lucidium dioxide, we just change the, our structure at the surface. Then we change the electrocatalytic activity by using that. So if you use the high surface area, you don't know the, the exact surface structure and you don't you cannot control this kind of difference. So only by using the well-defined surface sample we can verify this difference between the sample to sample. So this is the reason. This is the first demonstration for the structure functional relationship of complex oxide in this uh, electrocatalytic uh, reaction, OER. So I want to emphasize our work. So to investigate uh, to get the further insight on the in, uh, structure dependent and the stability in, for the real time we perform the in-situ X-ray spectroscopy and scattering at the same time by using our home-built in-situ X-ray cell. It is a very small and it is very cheap, uh, but it is a very necessary to perform this kind of in-situ X-ray study. From that, it is possible to get the real-time monitoring for especially the stability of the electrocatalysis. It is very important. So, as you might know, uh, I want to introduce very briefly how to measure and how to analyze the data. So, the left figure is uh, our X-ray diffraction pattern. So the Q, the vector Q, if the vector Q match with our lattice HKL the in the reciprocal space map, then you then this P appear so correspond to the outer plane of the lattice. This P correspond to this substrate and this lattice um, constant is correspond to this uh, small p. So if you analyze this data, we can exactly know this lattice constant of our material. In addition, by using reciprocal space map, it is the same with uh, this technique. We know this implant is well matched with our substrate. 
In addition, I would like to emphasize if you think about this small oscillation, then your sample is a perfectly uh, aligned with the bottom and top, like the meter. And using the special technique, we can verify individual lattice parameter chain when we apply the potential. It is a very powerful tool. So by using this technique, we can monitor our structure uh, real time. So here is our result. So this is thickness versus our potential. Before some critical potential, thickness maintained. However, after applying the critical potential, thickness decreased. That means you lose your material. And after the process, we measure uh, the surface by using atomic force microscopy, then it gets worse. And also, depending on the structure, the thickness change is quite different depending on the structure. So we know SR111 is um, more unstable during the OER. So by using in-situ X-ray spectroscopy, we can study critical potential and kinetic and structure dependent. So here is the thing. So there is a two. There was two. There were two scenario. One is strontium driven uh, dissolution process, and the other is a lutein driven process. By using our in situ spectroscopy, we determine lutein driven process is correct. What does it mean? The origin of the instability is closely related to the origin of the activity <coughs> at the same material. Then what does it mean? So you need the balance between the stability and activity. At, because if you choose the stability, then you lose some amount of the activity. If you choose the activity, then you can lose your stability. It's like our life, our life. We have to choose between two, two things. So we suggest this design rule. We have to compromise between the stability and activity. We verify by using uh, different material from lucidium to uh, strontium uh, lucinate. So we publish in Nature Communication. After that, we verify uh, with a different element from osmium to iridium to platinum and gold. Our design rule is same with all the material. Then what does it mean? Actually, by using our design rule, we can create new electro uh, catalysis by using uh, our film. How to do that? By using natural surface segregation. So the surface covered with the iridium, but it's small enough. So lucidium see the electro uh, electrolyze, so it maintain the activity. So we actually enhance the five times stability with the same with the same activity. So here is the, my first part, and I want to introduce uh, in, uh, the information storage system uh, from. So there are various. Uh, system from atomic molecular memory to uh, fresh or magnetic MRAM from 
proof of concept stage to production stage, I want to introduce the resist random access memory. So what is a resistant random access memory? There are two uh, re reversible uh, information state, state, like one or zero. So you can use one or two, zero as a memory state. And also you can chain from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. So you can control by using simple applying the voltage. What is the benefit? It is a non-volatile memory. It is a very simple structure. And it is high speed uh, writing and reading uh, sequence like this. So you can just apply the voltage. Then you can chain your resistance state and you can write them information. This device consists of metal, platinum, insulating the complex oxide and platinum metal insulator metal structure. It, it's like the normal capacitor geometry. Then what is the origin of this uh, controllability? It is due to this oxygen vacancy channel. Oxygen vacancy channel can create a conducting channel. So if there is a conducting channel, it is so conducting, we call it is one state. And if, if you destroy this oxygen channel, oxygen vacancy channel, then this state is zero. So it is very simple. However, however, this RM has a tip, uh, significant problem to realize the real product. Real product. What is it? If you if you see carefully, this is typical uh, our measurement IV curve. Then the second curve is diff slightly different from the first curve. So what does it mean? If you measure again and again, then your switching potential is overlap with the other uh, sequence. Then it will fail to writing and reading information. This is a very severe problem. We have to address this issue. Then we solve the problem. The answer was people, many researchers thought about this oxygen channel as a single channel like this. However, our research question was what about the network? Rather than the single channel. So what if this channel consists of small network? Then can we understand this wide distribution of the switching voltage? As I mentioned before, our answer it was yes. By simple physics model, we can simulate and we can predict our uh, experimental data. I want to show you like this. This is our experimental result, and this is our simulation result. So we explain the wide distribution of the switching voltage. Then what is the physical origin from for this kind of wide distribution, we think that it is uh, collect. It is due to collective motion. So the reset current, which is the maximum current in the IV curve, like this, versus uh, three omega measurement, is related to joule heating time. If you plot these two quantities, then we observe the one line. Then that is a scaling relation. From our theory, we predict the exponent 
which is uh, very important in the scaling relation. Our experimental value is uh, exactly the same with uh, our theory within error bar. What does it mean? Our phenomena, our Y distribution is originate from the collective motion which is related populating system with the Joule heating. This is our answer. It's a, it, it is a very cool. So, I want to show you some interesting clip. So, if you give some impulse with the electric fuel, then you can generate this kind of interesting pattern. If you see carefully, you can notice that this is almost the same. So we call this is a fractal. This is from the collective motion. So this is exactly the same with our uh, fractal nature. So we understand this, this kind of fractal nature. So we actually predict the physical quantity of our system by according to our uh, theory, temperature is a very temperature is a key factor to control the memory state. So we change the temperature, then we can modify the memory state near the uh, zero reading voltage. So our experiment verified our theory. And also, we realized the high density memory with the controlling the memory device. Uh, this invention preceded even Samsung Electronics, the reading company, and HP. Also, it was a reading company. So we achieved uh, <coughs> the high scalability compared with the Samsung and the HP. So here is uh, our second part. I wanna share my vision <coughs> uh, within uh, 10 minutes. So as I mentioned before, I'm very, I'm very interested in understanding emergent phenomena of complex oxide at the interface for energy and information storage. For me, I the controlling oxygen vacancy or ion motion is a critical. So I want to understand the mo ion motion in our complex matrix with the ex external perturbation. That is my ultimate goal in my research. So to do that, I want to learn the condensed matter physics and electrochemistry and material science division, material science. So here is my research plan for five years. I want to explore the quantum material or explore new quantum state. Here is one example. We can grow the epitaxial strontium iridate uh, 2 on 4 phase, which is which exhibit uh, new quantum ground state, so-called J-effective half, one, one half state, like similar with the uh, high TC superconductivity, but they didn't find the, any clue of the high TC superconductivity because it is far from the phase boundary. By using our ionic gating, using electrochemical ray, we can tune the, elect the electric carrier concentration or we can create the oxygen vacancy or we can rearrange ionic uh, position. Then it opens the new possibility for us. By using in-situ X-ray scattering, we, we verify exact structure for the real time as well as by using our 
relatively new technique in situ resonance in elastic scattering at uh, APS, we can actually monitor the ground state of the, this material, like magnetic excitation or band gap or orbital state. So we, we developed this in situ rigs technique uh, since 2013. It is a very new technique. I think we are the leading uh, group uh, for the rigs, uh, in situ rigs. So again, I want to emphasize that my main goal is the understanding electron structure and orbital state for exploring quantum uh, state. So our research uh, method is the synthesis and characterization and theory by using first principle calculation or DFT calculation. So with this collaboration, I want to tackle the issue of the oxygen vacancy effect or the electric the carrier concent concentration control effect. So at, at University of Vermont, we can investigate physical property of the thin film. I can, I can grow high quality layer uh, structure of the uh, complex oxide by using oxide MBE. Then the uh, collaborator uh, at University of Vermont, we can measure the magnetic property or magnetism of our sample. And also we can understand the synthesis science by using in situ X-ray studies as synchrotron. And also by using DFT and the AFM, we can really understand what's going on at the surface. So I want to keep doing my collaboration with APS uh, beamline scientists as well as NSLS2. I want to uh, build up new collaboration with uh, the the faculty at University of Vermont. So this is our external collaboration from the Seoul to at Argo. Uh, I want to thank my collaborator to achieve uh, our recent work. So thank you for listening. Questions? You know, a slide that uh, shows uh, the reaction of uh, OH4, no, OH minus to produce. Can mm -hmm. you pick up that slide? You have a 4 OH minus to. Questions. One is uh, where do you have this for? Where was the source for OH minus? The other one is uh, uh, so what's the energy generated? Right. So so using our setup, uh, there is electrode. This is uh, uh, operating with. Uh, uh, Position. So, if you apply the potential, then you can uh, create the reaction at, at this position. So, the first answer was 
Where's come from the weight minus is the uh, uh, water, the KOH. So the aqueous solution can suffer uh, supply for the weight minus. And also we need energy uh, from this ground state to this ground state, uh, this um, ex excited uh, state. That is, uh, we need the voltage. The theoretical uh, value is 1.23 volt. In order to generate this reaction, we need this 1.23 volt to excite the energy level. Is strontium iridate a, a mod insulator? Mm -hmm. It is. And, and so by this field induction method, you're going to hold open? Mm -hmm. Right. We can, so it's a very important question. So recently, the 2 on 4 phase is a very interesting platform to uh, study uh, the new quantum state is a uh, J effective half is a volt insulator. So uh, they predict uh, some superconducting state uh, when we doped. However, they fail because the chemical dope gives some inhomogeneity. However, by using this ionic gating technique, you can. Uh, you can generate electron dope or hole dope uh, homogeneously. So it is. I think I believe it is a very noble way to control the carrier concentration without any homogeneity. <coughs> Very important question. Depending on your material, uh, the cycling will be limited because uh, our lutetium dioxide is very easily degraded. Uh, so that is one of issue for uh, solving long term stability. So yeah, that is uh, still research problem. Thank you very much. So in this RRAM, um, you're turning it on and off for the voltage, and so you set this really to these oxygen vacancy channels. And so these are shifting around, they stay in the same location, so what's the, what's the physical mechanism that you get this current switching? Yeah, it's a very uh, interesting for me. Uh, so the answer is the, the important thing is the rearrangement of the oxygen vacancy. So, So if you look at uh, this TEM image, this structure is different from this uh, insulated material matrix. So naturally, oxygen vacancy is uh, arranged uh, to this kind of uh, magnetic phase. It is, uh, so magnetic phase gives some higher conductivity. So it is very interesting. So if you think about this uh, network, if you lose one spot, then you lose uh, conductivity. So oxygen vacancy moves around, but depending on the field direction, in naturally form the, with the direct, uh, direction, it gives some uh, High conducting uh, state. So you're turning on and off for yeah, the pass. pass yeah, pass. The physical origin is the uh, depending on the material. So uh, usually through heating a neon uh, the metallic uh, compound and electric field can generate the oxygen vacancy. So on and off.
Just a, a simpler question on the same slide. Why do you use a triangular wedge there? Doesn't that seem to introduce single point failure mechanism? Or oh, it is a very good question, and it is uh, related to electrodynamics. So it is naturally formed, like the tri triangular shape. Due to if you think of if you calculate the field strength of uh, by using electrodynamics, then it is a natural form. So you naturally the single channel is preferred. But if you apply the more potential, then you can increase your conducting channel. Then you cannot convert to insulating state. It is just a delicate condition. And you wouldn't want to use a diamond so that you could use a flip at either end because your electric field is concentrated from the, the BE side or the TE side, in effect? Yeah. Um, I, I have a question, uh, an experimental question. Can you do the in situ RICs and the in situ X ray scattering in the same system, or are those two completely different things? Right. Um, the RIGS uh, requires some special geometry, uh, so we cannot do at the same time. Mm -hmm. But we can prefer two electrochemical cells, so with the ident identical uh, sample, so we can uh, we can perform uh, both so, with so the same. System. What's the incident X-ray energy for the for the RIGS? Uh, you have to be at uh, so, depending Some, uh, on the system, LH or something, right? Right, LH. So, every day we usually use uh, 11 kilo electrical for the glucinium LH. Mm -hmm. It is uh, very sensitive to prove the magnetic excitation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is a question from a completely ignorant person. So, what does in situ mean again uh, in this context? In situ means uh, we usually uh, we usually synthesize the material. After that, we measure at the beam line. But in situ means uh, we can grow at the same time we can measure during the growth process. That's that's uh, in situ. Right. So is it a a matter of um, I don't know designing the right chamber or something? Is it I mean, technically, mm -hmm. is this the problem? I mean, I know that something is done at the same time, but so it's the special design of a chamber growth process which will match the measuring apparatus or something? Uh, right. Something uh, like we that? need that kind of special mm -hmm. uh, chamber. Mm -hmm. so <coughs> at the beam line, we need a brilliant dome to monitor the uh, X ray pattern. And at the same time, we need a source the efficient cell to grow the uh, film at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we need a special chamber for that. Mm -hmm. So is it better to do it in situ than extra situ? Or uh, right, yeah. So, so why? Why, mm -hmm. why so, is it better to do it? Mm -hmm. So the power of in situ x ray technique is the, we can monitor uh, right away. So. Uh, if you assume the material is easily degraded uh, with the uh, air, then you cannot measure the exact the same structure with at the gross uh, condition. So we need that uh, in situ power. So this is real time. So let's say layers are formed uh, in real time, and we have the snapshots of every function of real time. Okay, if not, let's uh, thank Dr. Chen.